dear friends, we want to wish you a Shabbat Shalom. This Shabbat, we'll be reading the Torah portion of Kedoshim. Kedoshim, the book of Vayikra, the third book of the Torah, has within it over 50 commandments of the Torah. To be exact, that is close to 10% of the commandments of the Torah are in this week's Torah portion. And what's interesting is that these 50 plus commandments are not all following one theme. Because we have other portions where most of the commandments follow one theme. It's a mixture of commandments. We have those that are interpersonal relationships. Don't take revenge, don't bear a grudge, rise before an elderly person, don't mislead someone. And then we have prohibitions and commandments related to our relationship to Hashem. Build the temple, keep the Shabbos. We have immoral relationships, idol worship. And what's fascinating is in our portion is that they were all woven together. It's not like there's a section of interpersonal relationships and now let's go to the serious ones or the ones that are between us and God. One verse follows the other from an interpersonal relationship and then to ritualistic things that are cardinal. For instance, idol worship. It's one of the commandments that even if you are forced, you must give up your life. Only three out of 613 that if you're forced, you must give up your life rather than transgress. Why would the Torah do that? What is the Torah's message when it fills a portion? And specifically, when we call that portion Kedoshim, being holy, it's not a word that's used all the time. Sanctify yourself. Why would a portion that talks about sanctifying yourself even have so many interpersonal rather than ritualistic commandments and prohibitions. But this is actually the Torah's message. Many people try to compartmentalize their lives or the lives of others and say that I am a good Jew when it comes to doing what God wants me to do for Him. I keep Shabbos, I keep kosher at the higher standard, etc., etc., I have the most beautiful periods fill in. But the things that are interpersonal, listen, life is life, I gotta take care of myself, and whatever I need to do, I'll cut corners, or I'll do it at the lowest denominator of doing that mitzvah. And others, the opposite. They say, I'm a mensch, I'm the nicest to people, I won't hurt a fly, I won't ever do anything bad to anyone, but the ritualistic, that doesn't talk to me. And each one thinks perhaps they're holier or holy because they're very careful in one area. And here the Torah tells us you cannot ignore one area or the other. Obviously, those who are following all the rituals cannot ignore the interpersonal relationships and the prohibitions and the mitzvahs, the positive ones that the Torah commands from us. And those who follow all of those commandments cannot ignore the ritualistic ones. They are woven together. They drive each other. When we believe in God and we recognize that God is at the center of our life, we behave very differently to people. Actually, in this week's Torah portion, we have the mitzvah of loving your fellow as you love yourself. You can only really love someone like you love yourself if you live a godly life. It's impossible otherwise. Whoever says they could is not real. There's always a bit of an ulterior motive, even if it's a positive ulterior motive. Only we can, when we're totally believing in God, we can become truly selfless. And at the same time, those who are very kind and good people, we always have to have a anchor for morality, for what's right and wrong, what's truly good and bad. It's impossible to live life. Look at Germany. They were a great cultured people, advanced in every area of knowledge and sciences, 
and they became the biggest monsters of human history. Kedoshim T, you want to be holy, you have to be wholesome. And to be wholesome, we have to work on both areas, serving God through our rituals and serving God through our interpersonal relationships. So God bless you all. We love you. Candlelighting Time Montreal, 7.49 p.m.